How would you calculate set to the 5 if you know that set is equal to minus 1 minus the square root of 3i? Set to the 5 is a power, so what we want to do is set to the 5, which is the same as minus 1 minus the square root of 3i, everything to the power of 5. If you think about this, calculating set to the 5 will be the equivalent to multiply minus 1 minus the square root of 3i by itself 5 times. Well, that is not complicated, but it is long. And just think about what happens if I change the 5 to a 10 or to a 1,000. Then it would be too long of a process. But you can make that process shorter if you think about the exponential form of a complex number. So just remember that we've seen this number before. We've seen this number in one of our previous videos. And in one of our previous videos, we found the modulus and we found the angle of this complex number. And we found that that was equal to 2 for the modulus and 4 pi over 3 for the angle which means that you can write this number as z is equal to 2 by e to the power of 4 pi over 3i if you use the exponential form. Now, let's calculate now z to the 5 by considering the number in its exponential form. If we want to calculate z to the 5, what we want to do is 2 by e to the power of 4 pi over 3 i, everything to the power of 5. If you remember a bit about the properties of indexes, you will realize that when we have a by b, everything to the power of n, that is the same as a to the power of n by b to the power of n. So we can actually apply that here. If we apply this property, we will have 2 to the 5 by e to the power of 4 pi over 3i, everything to the 5. So the first one is easy, 2 to the 5 is only 32. And then for the second one, you need to remember another property of indexes. If we have a to the n, and then everything to the power of m, what we do is we multiply the exponents. So we are going to apply this here. If we multiply the exponents in this case, we will get e to the power of 20 pi over 3i. So in general, if you have a complex number in exponential form, say it's equal to r by e to the power of theta i, then to calculate any power set to the n, where n can be any number, the only thing we have to do is to take r by e to the power of theta i everything to the power of n. If we apply the properties of indexes, then this is the same as r to the n, so the modulus gets to the power of n, and then that by e to the power of theta by n by i. So just realize that the modulus gets to the power, while the angle gets multiplied by n. If we think about the polar form, remember that z is equal to r cos of theta plus i sine of theta. If we try to calculate z to the n, we will have that that is equal to r to the n, which is the modulus, by cos of theta plus i sine of theta, everything to the n. So probably you are already realizing that this bit doesn't look easy. However, we have seen that in the exponential form, z to the n is equal to r to the n by e to the power of theta n i. Remember that the angle gets multiplied by n. If you remember when we first talked about the exponential form, we showed that e to the power of theta i is the same as cos of theta plus i sine of theta. Therefore, if you think about this form here, we can replace the exponential by using a similar formula. The only thing is theta here and here will get replaced by n theta. And that will give us that 
z to the n is equal to r to the n by cos of theta n plus i sine of theta n. And now if you compare the power of z given in polar form at the start, and then the power of n that we've got here, you will realize that since r to the n is equal to r to the n, you will realize that the comparison of these two expressions implies that cos of theta plus i sine of theta to the n has to be exactly the same as cos of theta n plus i sine of theta n, and that is known as the Morris formula. If we go back to the example we had at the start, that was about calculating z to the 5, remember that we had z given in Cartesian form, minus 1 minus the square root of 3i, and from our previous videos we knew that r was equal to 2 and theta was equal to 4 pi over 3. At the start, we found out that if we had z written in exponential form, then calculating z to the 5 was easy. And we got that z to the 5 was equal to a complex number that had modulus equal to 32 and angle equal to 20 pi over 3. Now, let's do the same by using the polar form and the fact that we now know the Moivre's formula. So if we consider the polar form, z is equal to 2 cos of 4 pi over 3 plus i sine of 4 pi over 3. Just remember that this is the modulus and then we have cos of theta plus i sine of theta. Then calculating z to the 5 is the equivalent to raise 2 to the power of 5 but also cos of 4 pi over 3 plus i sine of 4 pi over 3 to the power of 5. As remember, we had a power property that told us that if we have a by b to the power of n, then that is the same as a to the power of n by b to the power of n. So having z to the power of 5 is the same as having 2 to the power of 5 and then the whole bracket to the power of 5 as well. Now we can make use of the Morris formula. Remember, the Morris formula tells you that if we have cos of theta plus i sine of theta, everything to the power of n, which in our case is 5, that is the same as multiplying the angle by n. Therefore, in this case, we are going to have 2 to the 5, which is 32, by, and now we are going to multiply the angle by 5. So we have cos of 4 pi over 3 by 5, which is 20 pi over 3, plus i sine of 4 pi over 3 by 5, which is 20 pi over 3. So this is z to the 5, which is a complex number that has modulus equal to 32 and angle equal to 20 pi over 3. And if you compare the results, the one that we got by using the polar form and Moivre's formula is the same as the one we got by using the exponential form.